Good morning. Today we're going to do a little tutorial on something that's called English paper piecing or EPP and it's not to be confused with foundation piecing. This is pretty much a handwork project and I have a little story to tell because I don't have children. I don't have to worry about going to every soccer game and um, baseball game and blah 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 but there are times when you have to go someplace and you're stuck there and you are just you know, lately it's all the this, this, this with our camera. But the other day we have a new customer and she's from New Zealand. So I had to go to UPS and a little bit of miscommunication. I ended up having to sit in the hot car for an hour waiting for UPS to open. And fortunately that day we had decided to do this. So I got out my box and I sat there for an hour and I was able to do something rather than sit there on my phone playing solitaire. So this is the, the perfect pick up and go. Have a little bucket, have some Ziplocs, whatever you have to do, have a little thing. But it's a great, great portable project. Now we're going to mostly, I'm gonna show you the basics on hexagons because hexes are one of the most famous and probably easily used pieces. There's 101 different ways to do this, and I'm gonna show you probably the simplest and what we like to use the best. So we're gonna start out with um, the paper pieces. These you can get in a bunch of different ways. You can either buy them in packages. They come, I thought I brought some back. They come in packages like this. There's usually at least 100 in them. They come in all different sizes, and if you don't want hexagons, they come in all different shapes. You can get petals, you can get diamonds. We'll, do a few of those in a minute but anyways this is how we sell them in packages they are reusable you don't have they're not a one and done product you can buy ones that are fusible not my favorite so we're going to go with a straightforward pieces just like this that you can purchase like this you can make your own some people use um oh, what are those things called index cards index cards or paper stock freezer to paper. me hmm? freezer paper this freezer paper you can actually freeze two pieces of freezer paper together and that'll give you a nice stiff thing. And if you're, use, if you're doing a weird shape that you can't find, then yay, do them. But to me, it is very much worth for six bucks to get a package like this. So it's whatever you like to do. Now for this technique, the first thing I do is I grab a hole punch and it doesn't matter what it is and I punch a hole in the middle of my piece. Just a regular old hole. I have mine as a fancy flower one, but you just need to get a hole. Can you see that, Marty? Mm -hmm. You're far enough? Okay. Oh, you zoom. I don't zoom. I know. So anyways, you want to just punch a hole in the center of that piece of paper. Once you do that, and I again, go through and do a whole bunch because you're going to, depending on the project you're doing, you're going to need a bunch of them. The piece that I have been working on for a long, 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 long time, but it's, I, it's great. I pick it up. I put it down. This is the project that I'm gonna someday, I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'm gonna keep going on it. So then I decide, okay, what size piece do I need to use to fill that piece? You wanna go a little bit bigger is a little bit better because you, if it's too small, you're gonna hate yourself. So figure out what size you wanna use. Now on this one, whatever size this is, I just measured a good big quarter inch around and then I cut myself rotary cut squares. So that part was done very quickly. And then if you want, you can just take a bunch of pile of them and again, get your rotary cutter out and you can whack, whack, whack all the way around the edges. If you don't want to do that, if you really want to keep it very, very, um, I guess, hand project, just sit here and you're going to chunk off and it doesn't have to be perfect, but you're going to chunk off a generous, leaving a generous quarter of an inch and whack 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 and again you can put you know several layers and just get these things cut down so that it's the shape that you need it to be now what we're going to take is and these are called sequin pins i sorry i gotta come closer <clears throat> it's good up marty i like the smaller pin because i i have tried i saw it, i used it on one of these pieces and I'm going to show you the difference and why that I like the sequin pins. They're very small. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Very small. I think that they're like not even an inch long. And yes, my big fat fingers sometimes have a problem um, dealing with them. But what you're going to do is you're going to put that piece in there and then you're going to go in with your pin in that nice little hole you just made. And you're going to go like that. 
Now, the beauty of that, as opposed to if you were going to go like this, this is a regular sewing or regular pen, is that, if I can get it in, there we go. That pen is going to be in my way. This pen is not. So when I start wrapping the fabric around it, this is always going to be in my way. So this is just a nice little size to use. It's not something you all have in your arsenal, but you know, I think that because um, we just reordered them, I think they're like six dollars maybe for a, a little piece, a thing like this, and it'll last you for a hundred years. And then if you get really tired, remember when you were a little girl and you made the um, the net fish with the soap bar of soap and you stuffed the uh, little pens. I know that was probably way before more of you were born. But mm -hmm. anyways, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. Marty doesn't have a clue what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. You don't really? No, I don't. Oh my gosh. That's oh okay. Gosh. We don't need to talk about it. <laughs> we don't. Okay. Anyway, so that's, that's what you do. So what I would do is I would go through and I would prep a whole bunch of pieces and I would have my stack of cuts. I would have my stack of punches and then you can have your, um, you can either pin them or not. That's up to you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to prep these pieces. Back in the old days, what they used to do was they would, in fact, I'll show you what they used to do. And boy, have we come a long way, baby, because let me tell you, this was, um, yeah, I don't want to use that. <clears throat> it was very hard. A couple more tools. I use just my, my, per, my favorite applique needles. That's what I use for these. You want something, don't get something really short and don't get something dull. You want it fairly thin and you want it um, sharp. And the other thing I really, really like is silk thread for this. The reason being is silk thread is very fine. It adds no bulk to the project and it also will meld in with the fabric and you will not see it when it's done. But it's strong. Too. It's And it's strong. The only back... Um, what is it? No, what is the word I want? The only bad thing, negative about it, is it comes unthreaded very easily out of your needle. But you know what? It's fine enough. You can get it right back into your needle, so it's not a big deal. Sorry, do a little spit knot. Okay. Back in the olden days, what you used to do, and tell me if you can see this. Mm -hmm. All right. As you would take your needle and you would come up through the paper and down through the paper. And that's how you would wrap it and you would flip the corners down and you would just up and down through the paper. Now this, this works fine. If you want to do this, you are more than welcome to do it. And maybe if that, you know, if you want to start out like this, that is perfectly fine, but you're going up through the paper, down through the paper. I'm trying to go speedily so that you you don't get bored with us. No, do you have to do the whole thing? No, but I want to get to the half part okay. to get past this um, corner. So that's what you used to do in the olden days. And then what you would have, if you can see, is this would be a basting line all the way around. And that would hold the fabric onto the paper. So then when you're ready to put it together, that's how you would do it. And then when you're all done, you just have to pick out all the basting thread. Now, the good bad about that, the good is, is it's very sturdy. It will hold together, no problems. The bad thing about that is, first of all, it's more abusive to your hands because you are having to push through the paper um, in and out, in and out, in and out. The other thing, too, is it uh, destroys your, your paper pieces a lot faster because you're punching a whole bunch of holes in these. So this is a new, and I can't even remember which designer came up with this, but boy. Missy Carpenter. Was it Missy Carpenter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She didn't. Yes. Yes, she did. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so what we're going to do I instead. Say, I... Sorry about that. We hit the wrong button, but I wanted to start with a fresh piece anyways. So that was my piece that I actually did through the paper. Now I'm going to show you how to do it without going through the paper. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to first get your pin in there. You're going to push the one side over. We're going to pull, fold the little corner down and make a little pleat. I'm going to go in with my needle and my thread and I'm going on. Oh, I did black, which is going to be harder for you to see. But anyways, we're going to take a little stitch, just going through the fabric. I'm not going through the paper. Make a stitch on that corner. Come up here with your thumb. And I'm going to take a couple or one or two or one big long one stitches up that side. And I'm going to come up to this corner. And again, I am only going through the fabric. Tighten that down. Take a back stitch. So I'm securing really well every corner. Go around to the cor next corner, take one or two stitches, whatever you feel like, grab that corner. 
You can see too why you don't want a really short stubby needle. Secure that, go all the way around. Remember we're taking our one or two stitches, whatever you feel comfortable with. And depending on two, whatever size your paper piece is. And I should have brought some samples. I just realized I have a couple really nice ones at home. Oh well. So anyways, you're gonna go all the way around until you get to your beginning corner. Always take that back stitch at the corner and fold that down, up and around. This is very nerve wracking trying to do this quickly with your camera staring at you. And we are done. Take a little catch stitch right there to hold it and you're done. And you take this, you pull the pin out of it, and you throw it in your little Ziploc full of, um, or your bucket full of pieces that you've got. So two advantages to this. I don't know if I talk about advantages. First of all, you don't have to pull all that basting thread out that you just put in when we did the one that we went through, this one. So you have none of that basting thread that you're gonna have to pull out. And we have not desecrated our paper pieces. So they're um, gonna last you a lot longer. All right, so that's how you prep your pieces. Now, if you were going to do say a dime or a square or a diamond, it's exactly the same concept. You're going to just start at the corner, wrap it, catch the corner, wrap it, catch the corner, wrap it, and then you have your squares. The same thing with diamonds. You're gonna start at a corner. Now the diamonds, because you've got the long points, you're gonna have these little dog ears or whatever you wanna call them. Leave those until you have to cut those off because you don't want to have um, really short seam allowances there. And in a way they are going to work out pretty well when you come to that certain point. So that's how you prep your pieces. You get them all ready and then you're ready to put them together. Now, this is when you don't have to use silk thread for this. I just do because I do the whole thing with silk thread. But let me tell you, for the next part of the process, silk thread really, really does do a nice job because it just sinks right into the fabric. You don't have to worry about color quite as much because you do have um, a nice neutral color. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this little project that I've been working on. It has been through the wars. I have demonstrated with this for a long time. And as you can see, I have actually pulled out some of the paper pieces that were in there. And then I had to go and put them back so that you would see what you're supposed to do, not what I did. It's a good idea on a continuing project that you always leave the outside papers in the um, project because once you start pulling these papers out on the outside edge, you're gonna worry about the seam allowances flopping around. Even though they've been basted around, if it gets really flopped around a lot, you could have a little bit wear and tear out there. So I try to leave my paper pieces in the whole outside entirety. But then once you get going, I could take these pieces all out and reuse them. So you don't have to have 5,000 different paper pieces, the templates, you can just use them and use them and use them. So I'm gonna show you real quick how you put these together. How are we doing on time? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our silk thread and we are going to put a knot in it. Now remember that this paper is bendable, so you don't have to worry about weirdness. It just works. Okay, let me see, where should I start? How about... Let's go right here, because we're gonna go start with an existing project process. Okay, this is a piece that I've got two sides in and I need to do now the third side, this piece side right here. There's a couple different ways you can do it. One of the ways is where you leave it flat, taking my thread, and I'm going to basically just go straight across like that and grab it. You wanna make sure, especially on these intersections when you have all these pieces together, take a little back stitch just for um, fear of snakes that it just is gonna hold. So then what you do is, if you think about this, if you go straight with your needle, what you're gonna end up is, is an angled thread. If you go diagonally with your needle, and you're gonna just have to try this out and learn it on your own. If you go diagonally with your needle, you're gonna end up with a straight stitch. It's kind of the reverse of what you would think would be common sense. But a straight stitch is going to show a lot less 
then an angled stitch. So what I want you to do is so we're going to just... the back side also. Oh, this is the back side, yes. Right. Yes. For this type of stitch, yes, that's what you do. So what I'm doing is, is I'm just going through and I'm grabbing a little bit on this piece and a little bit on that piece, add an angle, and that makes a really nice straight stitch. Going in with my, notice my needles in an angle, and that will end up giving you it's hard to see, I know, it's really, because I hate to be this way, but you gotta do fairly small stitches. And they don't have to be right on top of each other. They can be not a quarter inch apart. This is the part you will learn, which is where. You wanna tug it fairly snide, snide, snug, because if not, it'll flop around and you will have your seams will open and they will be, it'll be very obvious, okay? Now, let me, okay, I'm going to go a little faster, and I'm um, not going to talk. Marty, if you have anything you want to say, <laughs> you can say. Right. That, yeah. The other thing, too, is I know that that's where it's supposed to be. Now I want to come down here. I also want to make sure, if you see right there with my fingers, these two ends have got to line up. Now, in a wonderful world, they will automatically line up. If for some reason something got a little stretched, you got a little too, too enthusiastic, it's very easy to just pull one side down a hair and it will it will work. Well, this is where when you do your basting, be very careful on the corners that you have them folded over nice and tight. Very good, because yes. Then they will all be consistent. Right. Okay, now I'm going to come to the corner and then Marty, I don't know if you can go, I mean, I made these a little bit bigger just so you could see them. And usually too, what I would do is like halfway down my seam, do a back stitch and that almost kind of locks it in Tightens things down just a hair. Okay. And now again, I'm at the corner, so I'm going to, first of all, this is a good place to make sure that everything is lined up. And I'm gonna lock that in a little bit tight. And then we're going to flip it over and see how I did. And again, the, the other thing I forgot to mention, I am not going through the paper here. I am just going into the fabric. Okay. So that is the seam right there that I just did. I don't know if you can see, but if, hopefully you can't see my stitches. Here, you cannot see the stitches. And that's the whole point. You're not supposed to see the stitches. Now, another thing about this, and that goes back to the thread color. I am using pretty much muddy colors on this. So gray is my go-to. A brown would work really nice. A dark tan would work really nice. On this project, I'm using um, Christmas colors. So I got out my red and green silk thread. So it's... You kind of got to use your judgment. All right, now, here goes, I'm going to do one more thing, and then we're going to, because um, what time are we, Marty? Are we, no, we're still good? Okay, so my next piece I decided, because here's where I ended, so that I don't have to cut my piece, I think I'm going to go put a piece in right here. So how about this nice little pink right here? Okie dokie, so this is the way it has to go. Yeah, because I'll go this way. Now, this is the other way you can do them. Before, I remember, I kept them flat. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right sides together, and this is where you may have to come around behind me. Okay. Excuse me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line that up, and if I have to mush this down with my left hand, mush it down. It's paper, and it's gonna not gonna do anything bad. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is grab my corners, and I think I'll just grab this corner of this other one. I, sorry, can you see? Mm -hmm. Don't move around so much. Okay. So now I've got all three of those corners, all three of those pieces are together and they are locked. So now what I'm going to do is instead of going flat, I'm going to do, and I waffle back and forth. You can do it either way you want. But again, I'm going with an angle with my needle, not straight. Do you see there how that's in an angle? and it makes a nice straight stitch. And that is gonna show less. I'm sorry, I got caught, lost in my thought there. That is gonna show less than if you have um, an angled stitch. So again, I am just going through the fabric. I am not going through the paper, okay? So the same thing, you go, you get over, you make sure that those are gonna end up. And this way it's almost easier if you have to do a little adjusting. You just kind of mush that over, pull it over with your fingers, 
ease it on in and that will work all right so i'm not going to bore you with any more of that but that's what you so that's what you end up with and then when you get to this corner you're just going to bend that down there and stitch up that side so everything is very bendy you don't have to worry about breaking any of your hexagons or anything like that so that's how you would add keep adding your hexagons and you just keep going and going and going and that's how you do that now just to do another quick couple quick shapes because again the um the hexagon is probably the easiest shape you will work with this is a little this is a pattern put out by missy carpenter actually and some of the patterns sometimes okay remember i said you can buy them this side this way you can also this is the project i want to start look at the size of that i can't wait um and this one if you oh here is this her sorry this is the way she does her patterns is you actually get the paper piece shapes in the patterns so this is a good way for nine bucks you get all of the paper pieces and you just snap them apart so this way you can try it out if you like it yay if you don't like it then you've not invested a huge amount so you would just grab these punch your hole and get you ready to do them so and on this one I'll just show you real quick because you don't need to see the whole process over again. On this one, all I did with my, I started out with my diamonds. I stitched down that side, stitched down that side. And I actually went through and did the whole star and got that. Then I wanted to add my squares. So what I did, if you think about it, that's where the square's going. So I flipped that down, stitched it down there, and then flipped it this way. Remember, bend your paper if you need to, stitch up that side, and you get your, um, that's how you put your square in. And then when you get your diamonds to go all the way around the outside, it's the same thing. Now, remember I talked about doing the little dog ear things? Sometimes it's okay if you leave them. On this one, they spun right around. I will trim some of this off, but in a way, they were not unhelpful. They they just kind of laid everything right out where the way they were supposed to go. So anyways, this is, that's the basics of English paper piecing. If you've got the right tools, which are, these are not costly tools. That's the nice thing about this. And you can use up piles and piles of scraps. This one is all reproduction-ish fabric. Someday I'll get it done. Doesn't matter if I do or don't, I've enjoyed working on it. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, we will be talking about more about English paper piecing um, as we go along, but this is the basics, okay? Thank you, bye.